Hello, this one is really annoying because this is the titration you do at home. And when you do something at home, you don't have all this lab equipment. So, no, 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 you don't have a burette. But you have stuff at home. You've got measuring jugs, you've got measuring thingies. And I happen to know because we did a previous lab that you have some kind of uh, measuring device at home to find mass, which is awesome. So what I'm going to do is do some quick and dirty um, titrations. And for that, I've got my fabulously exotic ingredients. I have white distilled vinegar, which cost me 92 cents at QFC. And I've got my Arm & Hammer baking soda, which reliably informs me it is 100% pure sodium hydrogen carbonate. So I want to make a molar solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, hey Siri. What is the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate? Hey Siri, what is the what is the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate? The molar mass of sodium bicarbonate is about 84.006 grams per mole. So it's translated by sodium hydrogen carbonate to sodium bicarbonate which is, of course, the old-fashioned name of it. So, 8.4006 grams per mole. I don't want to put 84 grams in, so I'm going to make a one molar solution, but I'm going to make it um, with 100 millilitres. So that means I have to measure a volume. I have to measure 100 millilitres. And I want a fairly precise measuring instrument, and I don't have one. I have this. But I do have this vase of my wife's, which happens coincidentally to be the same shape as a measuring cylinder. So I have measured out 100 millilitres in this measuring cup. But of course, measuring anything more precise than that would be an absolute disaster. So I put this into here. And it just fits. I didn't do any preparation of that at all. And then I take my faithful Sharpie. I put a line exactly at the bottom of the meniscus, kind of, and then I want to measure that out in tenths. So I look at the bottom of this and the top of this, and it's exactly 18 centimetres. So every 18 millimetres, I'm going to put a little mark. Ugh, I've lost it. six, and then four, and then two. And then zero, and then eight, six, four, two. Okay, and now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have my uh, 100 milliliter cylinder measured out in increments of 10, which is kind of nice. But yeah. I've got a 100 milliliter measuring cylinder now. So what I want to do is make a one molar solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate. It doesn't matter what molarity you make as long as you know what molarity it is. So Siri told me 84.006, so I want one tenth of that. And so 8.401, because this has three decimal places. I don't know what you've got at home. It probably hasn't got three decimal places but you just have to work within the limitations of your equipment at home because there's going to be a lot of limitations. And now I wander over here and I've got to get a spatula and I need what? 8.401. And I probably won't get exactly that because hmm, 2.823, 3.3, 4.3, 5.3, 6.3, 8.401 is a lot. Here we go. But it's only Arm and Hammer baking soda, so it doesn't really matter. 8.4, ooh, I went to 9.1. Take it away. 8.8, 8.406, that's amazingly good. I don't think I can get any better than that. Eight point four zero two. That's really, really good. I didn't expect to get it that well. So I pour that into here. I try and get it all in, and then I fill that up with distilled water. So here's my one molar solution of.
sodium hydrogen carbonate, or at least it will be, when I put some distilled water. Just wait for a moment and I will put the distilled water in. I'm putting the distilled water in, but you can't see me. You can not believe me. Whoops. Right. Now here it is. I filled it up with distilled water and now I use a very, very scientific method to mix this. And I've got my one molar sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, that's my base. My acid is the white vinegar. So what I'm going to do is, well, I have measured this out. I've cheated a bit. I've put 20 millilitres of um, well, white vinegar in here. You can tell it's that because it's white. And I'm going to stick that into here, which is just a glass. And I'm also going to put some of this stuff, which is red cabbage indicator. Now, you know red cabbage indicator. I'll just get this. So what I did was get a bunch of, yep, you guessed it, and boiled it up in here. And you boil it up for a while because you want pretty concentrated red cabbage indicator. You only get it pretty concentrated by getting rid of a lot of the water. So in order to concentrate it, you can see what I've done. I've got rid of most of the water and I poured that into here. And it's really nice and dark. But you can see that I've got my unknown molarity of white vinegar here. No idea what it is and don't particularly care, but I'll find out soon. And also, I'm going to put an equal volume of this indicator in. You notice it's a lovely colour. It's, um, it's this purpley colour. And the best thing about it is it's a pretty precise um, indicator. And so what it does is fairly well tells me what the, uh, the pH is going to be. So here we have a certain amount of um, 20 millilitres of my uh, um, vinegar, but I've diluted that by one to one by putting the indicator in, which is mostly water. So whatever the molarity of the vinegar was, it's now half of what it was. So bear that in mind when you do your final calculations. So now I start putting this in. And you see immediately it starts to make a different colour. Now it's also doing a chemical reaction which releases uh, carbon dioxide. So when it's releasing its carbon dioxide, uh, I have to wait for it to clear in order to actually see the colour. And you can see it's a sort of purpley colour. Now at this point, I have to show you what the colours of this indicator are at different uh, pHs, and I recognise you can find it very hard to see that, but I'll send you the link for this. But you can see that at zero, strongly acidic, it's a lovely red. And then it slowly passes through some pinks, some purples, and when it changes from purple to blue, then that's when we know that uh, it's going to start turning into uh, an alkaline solution. And that's where we want to stop. So, I need Declan to, show, to tell me when it goes to blue because, as you know, I've got red-green colour blindness, which makes it pretty difficult to tell when purple turns to blue. But that is not blue. And here it is, frothing away like a monster, but you can sort of see if I put a white page behind it, but it's still pink. Now it's getting darker and oh, thank you. Now it's going purple and I'll have to wait for that to clear again. I'll show you that color. Mm. But not blue yet. And that's still purple, isn't it? Yeah, getting closer. It's getting closer, yeah. So there's, I'll put the white paper behind it again. And we'll just keep going until it does turn an unequivocal blue instead of a sort of undecided purple. What's that? Is that blue yet? Ah, uh, that's light purple. It's getting closer, it's blue. Mm, it's getting closer, but it looks blue to me, unfortunately. 
picture. Still purple. Put a little page behind it. That is still purple. Almost still blue. purple! Oh my gosh! Almost blue. Right, so we'll put that much in and. So. Looks close to a blue to me. Close to blue. It's not there yet, is it? A little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. Oh. What a delicious colour of blue. Yeah, isn't that nice? And that took. Wow, it's down to 30 millilitres. Pretty well exactly. And that means that used 70 millilitres of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide. So it's now up to you to use the rules of titration like you did in the proper titration that you weren't able to do because we're not in the lab. And you've got these measurements. Molarity of sodium hydrogen carbonate, 1.0. Volume of sodium hydrogen carbonate is um, 70 millilitres. 70.0, I guess, but I think 70 is about as precise as you can get. The amount of, or the volume of vinegar I used was 20 millilitres, but remember the molarity of that is diluted by a factor of two, so the molarity is half of what it should be because I put an equal volume of water-based indicator in there. Good luck working out the molarity <coughs> of extremely cheap smidge spoon distilled white vinegar. 92 cents from QFC. Thank you, linesman. Thank you, ball boys.